Shorty's back, and in this video, Guy's gonna walk through some performance data. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with Guy Miner. Thank you, Guy, for joining us again. It's good to be here. This is a fun one. A while back, I built Shorty, the 16-inch 308 compact suppressed rifle. We've been having a ton of fun with it. Uh, as a follow-on, tell us about what we're gonna do in this video. Well, in this video, we're gonna review your build. Okay. Okay, gotta go yep. over that stuff again. And talk about some of the highlights of the build, some of the products that were used, and some techniques that you had to do to mm -hmm. make this little tiny barrel work. Mm -hmm. Then, we're gonna explore Hodgdon's pistol data for the 308 Winchester. I bet you didn't know that existed because I didn't know that existed until Guy showed that to me. <laughs> yeah, it's a great source of info for shorter barrels mm -hmm. like this. Um, yeah, Very cool. we'll, we'll get into that. And then the test results of several different types of ammunition, both hand-loaded and factory ammo. Mm -hmm. We can compare them between the 24-inch barrel on my rifle and the 16-inch barrel on Shorty. Yep. It's uh, interesting differences and not necessarily a disaster. <laughs> right. Oh, right yeah. We've seen Green Machine here on the channel yep. in different forms, different stock, different configs, and, and that kind of thing. I think even different optics, if I remember correctly. And then there's Shorty. Let's talk about Shorty real quick. Okay, so this was a recent build. I wanted to do something really compact, uh, kind of along the lines of a scout rifle, but really, really short barrel, right at 16 inches. We did a poll on that, and over 4,500 of you all voted, and the overwhelming majority wanted to see 16. I think the options I gave were 16, 18, and 20 inch barrel options. So this is built around a bat igniter action, which is kind of like the TR action that you've seen here on the channel, but a bit more affordable. It doesn't have an integral rail. Uh, it has a separate rail, but a lot of the same attributes are going to be familiar. It also has a traditional style hanger instead of the removable hanger that you can load up cartridge style. And we've got a benchmark, barrel, foundation, dominion, stock, trigger tech, special trigger. Just a really, really nice package. And the foundation dominion, if you've, if you've been watching the channel, you've seen the Genesis 2. It's a heavy PRS oriented stock. This is a bit more compact. This is a bit more lightweight. It's got some cutouts right down here that you're going to see right there uh, to reduce weight. And uh, it's just... A really nice package and it's got that familiar characteristics and the familiar feel of micarta which is a little different isn't it yes and it's it feels very solid mm -hmm. um yeah, it's a good feeling and that stock i found incredibly comfortable to shoot mm -hmm. so that that was really nice yep it's just kind of it's kind of a really nice feeling we do have a complete story on the dominion so you're going to want to check that out as well okay so another nice aspect of this build and, and what makes it compact is the Hawkins Precision Hunter DBM. This bottom metal uh, features a release that's right here mm -hmm. inside the trigger guard. It takes a fair bit of force. You're not gonna accidentally uh, drop your mag even if you've got gloves on and you sort of run your finger up against that. And the Hunter mag, this is an aluminum mag. This is CNC machined and it goes up into the bottom of the rifle almost flush but it leaves you enough to to grip it when you go to pull it out right so i'm a huge fan of the hawkins precision hunter mag and the hunter dbm really really good stuff and again we've got the full story that goes through the build and some of the initial shooting that we did with that then we have the banished 30. And again, we have this really in-depth story. We put it on the recoil rig. We ran the seven inch config and the nine inch config. This is the seven inch config without the extension, which I specifically wanted on a compact rifle. Right, right? of course. Keeps it down. Now, you were noting something about the overall lengths on these rifles that is really interesting. Let me get these kind of next to each other. Yeah, with, with the suppressor on here, Shorty measures 42 inches overall length mm -hmm. and the old green machine 44 inches, two Four. inch, two inch difference. Yep. So even with the suppressor, you've got a more compact rifle yep. than I do. And if you threw a brake on here or a suppressor, obviously it it's just, the traditional thing. It just kind of hangs even further out. Yep. So kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting package. And uh, 
and so yeah, the, the Banish 30 is kind of one of our favorites. We've seen it in, in a number of different uh, rifle configurations and with different calibers as well. Okay. So tell us about this pistol data. This is stuff that I ran across years ago when I was contemplating uh, buying or building one of those specialty bolt action pistols in a rifle cartridge. Mm -hmm. I never did that, but I saw the, the data and it's not in all of Hodgson's annual manuals, the print ones, mm -hmm. but it's on their online the reloading site. data yes. center, huh? And so when you go there, don't go clicking over on rifle to find your 308 stuff. <laughs> Click on pistol and scroll down to 308 or 7 millimeter 08, or there's a bunch of really? them. Really? Yeah. Okay. There's a bunch of them in there, and they're all in 15 inch barrels, which is very typical for those specialty pistols. Mm -hmm. And the data that was predicted in that is pretty darn close to what we managed to achieve. Nice. Okay, so let's talk about chronograph results then. Right, we took uh, five different types of ammo, two hand loads and three factory loads, mm -hmm. and ran them through both the 24-inch barrel and the 16-inch barreled rifle, uh, which was a lot of fun. I hadn't done a lot of shooting in a while. <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a fair bit of ammo we burned up that day, and I enjoyed that. Um, so the one that is well worth mentioning again, we've used it before, is Hornady's 168 grain factory ammo mm -hmm. with their Amax bullet mm -hmm. and because that has shot so very accurately for us I think that's what we have on this target here. Oh yeah take a look at that factory yeah. ammo this was during the break-in if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah you yeah. shot better than I did that day these are that both, day. <laughs> both of guys groups that he shot kind of back to back. Yeah 0 0.460 and 0 0.458. Very nice. And Yeah I, I was very happy with that mm -hmm. and so with our short barrel we were looking at 2506 feet per second mm -hmm. that's our average and in the longer barrel my 24 inch we picked up 200 feet per second we're at mm -hmm. 2711 which is right where I expect 168 grain 308 round to be mm -hmm. from that barrel from that rifle um, works out great um, it just occurs to me here the one and eight Bart line with a 30 cal I'm wondering about doing 30 cal subs with this right I think we had mentioned that previously yes and I think we should do that we've got We've got one and eight on our 300 blackout, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to take those same Barry's 220 grain plated bullets, load them in 308, and kind of like the fun that we had with the Henry 3030, you know, push those guys through shorty and have all sorts of fun up up on the steel targets. On the steel targets, yeah, there. why perfect, not? Perfect rig for that. Why not? And so it looks like about a couple hundred feet per second. Yeah, and that held true with all the difference loads between the two rifles right yeah. so you've got uh, eight inches difference in mm -hmm. um, barrel length mm -hmm. that's about 200 feet per second about 25 feet per second per inch mm -hmm. and uh, that's an interesting you know and that's just an average mm -hmm. and I know the two barrels are, are different in many other ways but the mm -hmm. big difference on the velocity comes from the length sure. so that anyway. makes total sense yeah yeah I tried uh, tried the Hornady's uh, tap their tactical application police, 155 grain mm -hmm. AMAX. Mm -hmm. I actually expected a little more velocity out of it, and I didn't get, it was very minimally faster mm -hmm. than the 168s, but it's a very easy load to shoot well, too. 32 feet per second faster in shorty. Yeah, that is that is a little surprising, yeah. but you never I, know until I you thought try. It would be, I thought it would be a little zippy, Great. but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, and then I uh, had a box of the military M118 with a 175 grain bullet, and that's pretty slow, but it's a good bullet for carrying out there at distance. It goes transonic a lot better than the traditional 168s. Gotcha. So, Interesting. yeah. Um, 2400, 2439 out of shorty, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is respectable for a 175 grain bullet. Mm -hmm. And then 26 and a half, 2658 out of the longer barrel. Um, tried some of these bullets we got from Mid-South. Oh yeah. These 168s. Right. And I like them. They're accurate. They're easy to load. I suspect they're made by one of the big makers mm -hmm. and they uh, mm -hmm. offer them at a pretty good discount there at Mid-South. Yeah. So kind of nice. Yep. Um, 2713 feet per second out of the little guy. Whoa. Yeah. That got my attention. Now that was a max load 46 grains of Varget safe in my rifle. Yeah. That's one of those things you need to work up to. Okay. Well, and what's interesting there is that, you know, that was the performance you got out of the longer right. barrel with the factory ammo. Right. Yeah, with the 168. Yeah. yeah. So you, you as a hand loader can work up that for your short barreled mm -hmm. 308 and have 
kind of a zinger. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a pretty good moving round. And <laughs> of course, we've got even more out of the longer barrel. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's pushing pretty good up there, 2,900 feet per second out of a 308 <laughs> with a 168. Yeah. Uh, then, then I got into, uh, I really like sometimes to use a short, stubby bullet in a 308. Mm -hmm. Reduces recoil, bumps up velocity, works great on deer. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't necessarily need a gob of penetration, but and I use the uh, 125 grain nozzler ballistic tip. You could also use their AccuBond. You could use um, the other companies make it. Barnes makes a really nice 130 grain TTSX. Mm -hmm. um, you could use any of those. And again, Shorty came up with 2,905 feet per second. That's awesome. That's moving. Now, I know <laughs> it's a lightweight little bullet, but I've yep. seen it absolutely pancake a white tail buck. I think that'd be effective on rock chucks if that was the rifle and that was the load that you had around, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would be. <laughs> and uh, what, what do you think? We've got another month or so before there's very many rock chucks running around here? Yeah. Maybe a month like and a half. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's a limited time frame. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and then, yeah, they'll come out and we'll, we'll say hi to them. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so 200 feet per second difference roughly. And so that's what you're giving up on with the little guy, the, mm -hmm. the short barreled version, but you're gaining a much handier package. Mm -hmm. So if you're hunting from say a deer blind, where there's yeah. little, very little room to maneuver inside, well, the long barreled rifles get a little unwieldy mm -hmm. and shorty would be perfect for that. Absolutely. And in close quarters, you know, it's, it's always nice with the suppressor, if you're yeah. going through dense brush or something like that, to not have as much hanging out there and snagging on things and all yeah, the rest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So a little shorter package there. And you, you do give up some velocity, mm -hmm. but not enough to make it a problem. Sure. Yeah, it's all depending on what your priorities are, right? Exactly. Yeah. Looking at bullets for the short barreled ones, I kind of alluded to that a little bit earlier. Um, I like to keep the bullets lighter for hunting to keep the velocity mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not talking long range 600 yard shooting of your deer. I'm talking more typical deer hunting ranges out to 300, 350 yards. Mm -hmm. um, I've only shot one that was at 400. Hmm. You know, so yeah, that hasn't been a problem. But keeping the bullets a little bit lighter helps you keep that velocity up. And yep. I don't think I'd pass up this buck either. One, yeah, yeah, he's a good looking guy. He is. 150s, 130s, the TTSX. That's, right. uh, yeah, an interesting compromise. See, copper being lighter inherently mm -hmm. for the bullet size. Yeah, yeah. and it's a, it's a tough bullet. Um, I know guys that consider it a genuine elk bullet. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is. The penetration on those, on those copper bullets is mm -hmm. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think we've already talked about some of our conclusions. They sort of crept <laughs> in there. Yeah. Um, Velocity loss, sure. Yep. But okay, I can live with that. Right. Um, <laughs> applications, hunting from a blind or a stand, as you know, 12 years as a leader of the Chelan County SWAT sniper team, mm -hmm. most of my calls were in fairly urban areas, and I would have loved a shorter rifle. Mm -hmm. now, I could have just taken a couple inches off mine, but um, <laughs> yeah, this uh, the little rifle you built here would be just about perfect for that. Nice. Yeah, I think it's nice to have a multiple 3.8s on hand, first of all, right? And it's really a choice uh, regarding do you want the velocity or do you want the compactness? And a lot of what's going to govern that decision might be whether a suppressor is, is in scope for you, right? Yeah. If you're not going to run a suppressor, sure, you can deal with a little bit more barrel length. Now, remind me, what was the barrel length on Green Machine? 24 inches. 24. Yeah. And so I was, 22 I was... would be a good... Oh, sure. Compromise. Yeah, yeah. very much so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was shooting a lot of uh, 600 yard and 600 meter matches in mm -hmm. those days. And I kind of liked that extra little bit of velocity mm -hmm. and a little more barrel weight out there to kind of yes. help it hang on target. So yep. that was that was all part of the thought process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if I've got to jump into the side by side and, and hold onto a rifle while I'm driving and then jump out. Yeah, shorty is going to be my pick because I do like to run suppressed, you know, whenever sure. I can. Yeah. Yep. It's it's great. And it really, you know, the suppressor makes that little rifle so easy to shoot. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it just enhances everything you did on that build. Yep. Um, I like suppressors. You know, another thing that I really like that we didn't really talk about too much is this Ares BTR Gen 2. You know, the, the clarity of it and then just 
the, I, I found the, the reticle particularly useful, and then its first focal plane, which is also really nice as, as an attribute. Yes. So, rounds out the package nicely. Our question for you is, what do you think between the option of shorty uh, with the suppressor coming in at a shorter overall length or a more traditional 308 with the 24 inch barrel yielding pretty much full performance potential? What would be your pick? Or if you were gonna build your own compact 308, what barrel length would you go with? What suppressor would you go with? And then finally, what about the lows? There's so many different 30 caliber bullet weights to pick from different charge levels, supersonic, subsonic. Tell us what you would shoot and tell us what you would shoot it in. Thanks again, Guy, for putting this data together. Thank you. Really this fun was, project. It was fun. And I've yeah. loved the 308 for many, many years. So it was, it was good to work with two nice 308 rifles. It's a classic as a cartridge. That concludes this video. And that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.